Now we're going to take a look at the Nissan 3300 V6 engine with a no start when the ignition key switch is turned to the starting position. A few testing procedure must be made before we can pinpoint the problem to our situation. When the key is turned to the start position, all the lights on the dashboard will appear. But when we try to crank, nothing happened. So we will step on the brake, try and place the vehicle in neutral, and try again. Nothing. We want to check the shifter first before we proceed because inside the shifter is a neutral safety switch. The neutral safety switch prevents the vehicle from starting if the shifter is in gear or reverse. Once the shifter is in neutral or park, the vehicle should start. But from this procedure, we're having a no start with the engine. If an engine fails to turn over when the starter switch is closed but the lights stay bright, there is probably an open circuit between the starter and the battery. If an engine turns over slowly but does not start, the problem could not be due to an open circuit in the starter wiring. Now let's proceed under the hood and we will first tap the starter on the engine. This will help us diagnose where the problem is really coming from. Because most of the time the solenoid on the starter will become stuck and prevent the starter gear from engaging onto the flywheel. This is why we're having a no this is why we're having a no start with the key and the shifter in park. This is a breaker bar, a piece of tool we're going to use to tap on the starter to disengage any mechanism that's stuck. You want to be careful that you don't hit any plastic. The starter can also be accessed from this area next to the oil pan where we can tap the motor or the solenoid. Be careful not to hit any plastic. The starter is right behind the front right side wheel vehicle. So we have diagnosed the problem to be the starter. Once the ignition switch receives current and voltage from the 40 amp fuse, the switch will then distribute its power through this fuse box. And on the inside is the cover with instructions. This is known as the passenger compartment fuse box and in this fuse box there is no fuse or relay pertaining to the starter or the no start situation we are currently having. By looking under the cover we will notice a starter signal with a 1.5 amp fuse. That starter signal might be 
a circuit to the ECM, the electronic control module. Always pay attention to your battery terminal. Notice in this clever engineering, the negative post is mounted next to the frame. If the battery should become loose and this terminal, negative terminal, should become in contact with the body, it will not cause an electrical problem. Do not mount the positive terminal side of any battery next to the body or any ground terminal. Here are some things that you should know about the automotive battery and its connection relating to component. First, it is always important that you grease the terminal. You want to put a lot of grease on the terminal. This will prevent oxidation or corrosion. Most of the time, a battery will fail because of a corroded terminal. So you want to make sure you put on a lot of grease there on both terminals, the negative and the positive. We also want to check the battery acid level. When you do so, you want to make sure you have a you want to make sure you have a plastic glove, you're wearing some goggles, and a respirator. The hydrogen, the acid inside this battery can become explosive, so be careful when dealing with the battery. I like to pour water and soap on a battery before I open its cover. So you want to check the battery acid or the battery electrolyte water level. You want to make sure all of them is even in each cell. To checking the battery acid, first you want to pour some soap and water onto the battery. This is an attempt to neutralize any acid that may accumulate on the top of the battery. Then we're going to open our cover. You see the acid on the bottom as I was going and put it there? Well, that's a bad thing to do. Once you take this stuff out, you want to throw it into a bucket of water. Now if you're going to deal with a battery like I'm doing with my hands, make sure you have a bucket of water because every time you touch a battery you want to wash your hands out. Now I have a little set of sticks here. I'm going to throw down into the cell. Now you're going to have to be careful with this because you're going to have to go between the plates to get down to the bottom of the battery. Then we're going to remove all of them and we're going to look at where the level is. And as we can see, the level is pretty much the same because the battery as we can see, the first one This first cell needs some liquid. The first, the second to last, and the last one. We will now add electrolyte into the battery. Now we will replace our cover. And that have complete our battery inspection. A lead storage battery like this one 
that is stored in a garage for a long period of time should be given a recharge about every 30 days before subjecting a lead acid storage battery to a high discharge test its specific graffiti reading should be higher than 1.215 never pour water into concentrated sulfuric acid when preparing the electrolyte for a lead acid storage battery a lead plate storage battery will not take a charge due to weak electrolyte you should always add water and acid that will be sulfuric acid when a lead acid storage battery is in a charge condition the lead oxide plate in the positive plates has been converted into lead peroxide High tension cable or wire are used in the automotive electrical system whenever high voltage current are, are wired. When we look at the battery connection, the simplest one will be the negative. The negative battery goes down and then is spliced into connecting itself by a bolt, a 10 millimeter bolt, to the body that wire then continue and anchor itself to the cylinder head actually it's on the power steering pump and that will be attached to the engine so that complete the negative circuit for the battery the positive circuit one wire will go to the fuse box the other wire will go straight down to the starter motor and not the solenoid additional wire may continue from the positive terminal and that wire should also have a fuse on it but the two most popular power cable you will find on the battery are the one to the starter and the fuse box exiting the fuse box are two route of wires this set of wire goes to the engine and transmission power control while this set of wire goes to the body and instrument cluster also in this what also in this harness also in this wire harness is the power for the ECU the electronic control module that wire maintain a steady power with the ECU for memory purposes all the wire for engine and transmission control will exit the firewall in this area all the wire from the ECU will run along this harness into various sensor and actuators those sensors will include the oxygen sensor fuel injectors, the distributor, igniter, and other emission sensor related. When we look on the exhaust manifold, we will see another ground strap making its way to the body. So if this ground was to be removed, the engine will still start. Never ground the body of the car and expect the engine to start without a direct ground you see the engine will not start if you just ground the body because the engine is sitting on rubber mount and the ground electric from the body is impossible to go through the rubber mount to make the engine itself ground so you must make sure you ground the negative terminal to the engine and then you could ground the body off the engine or you could do it vice versa very important that the engine is grounded to the battery or the negative is connected to the battery because the engine is where the generator for the battery is mounted the generator need to be on a ground circuit with the battery 
to charge the battery. When we look at the left side of the vehicle, we will also see on the exhaust manifold down here is another ground strap and that ground strap goes to the body itself. So we have three ground to the engine. The energy stored by a storage battery is commonly given in amperage per hour. The voltage developed in each cell of an automobile battery is 2 volts. A storage battery becomes sulfate when the battery is discharged. To remove the starter or make any disconnection, we must first test the battery. We want to keep our diagnostic as simple as we can and start with the simplest testing that we can. So we're first going to start by testing the battery. Well, Sometimes it is best to disconnect the positive battery terminal before you load test the battery. But it is okay if the terminal is still connected. What we're going to do to the battery is we're going to place a load on its circuit. That will be the positive and the negative terminal. By placing a load on the battery we will be able to see its performance. By performing a load test on the battery, it's the same thing as turning the key on the ignition switch because the ignition switch is what distributes that load throughout the vehicle. We're going to use this battery load tester to test the battery. Now the goal is with this tester is that it has a load switch on the bottom. The load switch represents the ignition key switch. We must first connect our positive terminal and negative terminal. Now we're going to get a reading on the battery condition. So the charging condition on this battery is at 12 and a half and it says low. So now we're going to hit it with a load and see where the needle return. The needle should return in the good or okay position but we want it to return in the good position. So here we go. We're going to hold the load test for one second. Let's start the engine up and make sure that the alternator is charging. Right now we're holding 12 and a half volts. So now we're reading 14 volts. The battery is in good working condition and the alternator. So now we can remove our tester and we will proceed with a test light. At the end of the test light is an alligator clip. This alligator clip will go to the ground circuit. The pointer is for positive testing. The next test we will do is we will place the alligator clip onto the positive terminal and check for ground. Once the light illuminates, we know that the ground circuit is perfect. And the body. And as we can see, we have a connection to the ground. So our ground connection is good. The next step we want to move to is to make sure that the positive cable from the battery to the starter is tightly connected. Then we're going to check the ignition wire that goes to the starter solenoid. The ignition wire to the starter solenoid will illuminate when the key is turned to the start position only. 
before we start to replacing any component, we must first make further tests along the electrical system to find out if we have a faulty start. Let's remove the cover from the fuse and relay box. Once we remove the fuse relay box, we will look for the relay or the fuse on the cover. Sometimes this information is under the cover, but we will look for our information in this area. According to the instruction cover, we have a 40 amp ignition switch fuse. The 40 amp fuse is strategically placed in the fuse box and it's also wired in the circuit parallel to the positive battery terminal. The 40 amp fuse is wired parallel on the positive circuit between the battery terminal and the ignition switch. This 80 amp fuse also play a major role in the starting system circuit in this area right here but it doesn't need removal because it's in pretty good condition you will look at the element under the glass and if it's burnt out that means it's no good we will take a test on these two terminal to make sure we're getting power from the ignition switch to the fuse box. Testing the fuse box relay circuit requires that you place the alligator clip, clip require that you place the alligator clip terminal on the negative side of the battery or to the ground chassis or the engine. Now we will place our test lead in and we can see we're getting power from one side of the relay. On the other side, there is no power. So this fuse will complete our circuit. And the fuse is in good condition. This white fuse is 120 amp and it's the main fuse for distributing voltage to the entire fuse box and the relays. Don't try to remove the 120 amp fuse by pulling it. The 120 amp fuse is fitted into the fuse box by screws on the side. The 40 amp fuse is wired parallelly in the fuse box with all the other fuse. This 80 amp fuse also play a major role in the engine starter motor circuit. There is no starter relay for the starter, only a 40 amp fuse. So we're going to replace our fuse box cover. It is very important that you have a fuse box cover. If you fail to have a fuse box cover or lose the fuse box cover, make sure you cover your fuse box with a plastic bag because you don't want water and stuff to go in in there and dirt. Those are the two most dangerous things for electricity. So keep your fuse box cover at all times. Now we're going to proceed down to the bottom of the starter and make our final test. Right down here next to the motor mount. So we're going to unplug this and make our test from here because for me to demonstrate that on the camera is nearly impossible since we do not have room. But this wire right here goes to the starter solenoid from the, fru fu from the fuse relay box to the ignition switch. This side of the plug, the male side of the plug, comes from the fuse relay box and the ignition switch while the female side goes to the starter. 
we're first going to take the end of the alligator clip on the test light and position it to a nice clean ground connection then we will insert the needle portion of the test light into the connector plug now I'm gonna cycle the key to start the car three times so we should look for a flashing light inside the test light casing Since the light luminate, that means the starter is getting all the circuitry that it needs. It means the starter is also getting all the power and electricity that it needs to perform starting the engine. Let's remove the test light and the alligator clip. Now we're going to plug back these two together. So we're going to put some grease on the connector for future reference since the harness is placed so low on the engine chances are water and other debris will try to get up in here so by putting some grease in there is an effort to maintain a clean connection and water tight when you have grease on the connection moisture and water will have a challenge getting in onto the metal connector. So now we're complete with all the electrical tests. So right up here when we remove this rubber boot from the starter positive connection this bolt right here is bringing 12 volt directly from the battery next to this this wire is the solenoid engaging wire this wire here will come from the relay box and in conjunction with the ignition switch so first we're going to test this terminal for power we're going to make sure that we have 12 volt coming to this starter terminal you also want to make sure that the connection is tight in this case it is from the factory. Let's make our test with the test light. By placing the alligator clip end to the ground or the battery negative terminal, we will now use the point of the test light to check for continuity. Now the connection might be a little dirty, so you're going to have to clean it up so the test light can make a connection. And as we can see, the light is on, so that means the cable is making connection. The starter solenoid is used to engage the starter gear onto the flywheel. The type of electric starting motor used in most cars today are usually the compound wound type. Let's replace our rubber boot. The starter motor and its solenoid will ground itself by bolting and attaching to the engine. And we're now going to proceed with removing the starter from under the vehicle. There is no access above the vehicle because the exhaust manifold and the catalytic converter is in the way. But we will pass the starter up in this area right under the fuel line between the body panel and the exhaust manifold. It's the only 
place that has a provision to slide the starter out from. Let's try our starting procedure again. So now we can truly say that the problem is a faulty starter and not the neutral safety switch on the transmission shifter. We will now proceed and remove the starter from the engine and inspect its internal component. We will now proceed and remove the starter from the engine and inspect its internal component. Its brushes and solenoid are two of the main components that we will look for.